Okay. So um, let me turn this off. Do this. Move this one out of the way. Do this one here. Now you are familiar with the Bridge Realty, right? So let's we'll go ahead and pull that one up. And I have a lot of designs. It helps if I get them spelled right. I don't think I spelled this one right. Okay, yeah, yeah. And there's a there's a way to deal with that too, by the way. Okay, and you were just going to the property search and what have you. Whatever. I don't really care. This is an old this is a fine design, whatever, but it's like it's five or six years old. Um Yeah, it it doesn't matter. The design thing is important, and it's old design anyway, and I, I just don't care. So I have newer designs, and the newer ones are dramatically better. Like here's an example of a newer design. Um, and pardon me because I have this little recording line. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then we have. I just have a lot of new designs. Like here's some, here's some of the newer designs, for example. This one is, is something that's a little similar to Boomtown. And you've got your homes that keep appearing as you scroll down. Uh, some people like this top area here, but they don't like the home thing. So then we can fool around with it. We can do like, um, let's see here. Sean.com slash agent slash Like here's an example. This is an agent website. Um, this is like the kind of site you can give away to your agents, by the way. Look at this. So it's the same cool top here, but instead you can, like they, when they log into the back, they get to put in their top cities and it populates all this. And then you have the, the really good uh, built-in search like this. So it's really neat stuff. Um, yeah, it's cool stuff. The new latest blog posts are here when they do their blog and what have you. And anyway, you get the point. I've got lots and lots of designs. Here's another one. These are like the newer ones. The Bridge Realty is fine, but again, it's like five years old. So, yeah. And like I say, it's fine, it's just old. Like look how much nicer this is. You know, it's just, it's just a little more put together. You know, whatever. Everyone has a different taste, so I don't care. I've learned not to get per take it personal because <laughs> everyone's all over the place with these things. Um, here's a, here's another one. Let me show you another one here. This would be another design. Now it's kind of cool, but again, I just don't really care. I, I don't take the design thing is of no concern to me anymore. I've I've done about 650 different designs. So they they look all kinds of different ways. This depends. I I whatever a person likes is what I do. I, I just have lots and lots and lots of. So the design thing is, in, is a, no no huge concern to me because I have so many designs and they're all in the back office, and I can show you some of that right now. So um, one of the things that you were interested in was lead generation. Also, am I correct? Are you familiar with AdWords at all? Okay, so okay, yeah. So the general idea is a person does a search, like for like certain things, like like Boca Raton, uh, like like something like this. Homes with a hot tub. They could just do Boca Raton real estate, but I I like to go after phrases that are more long tail, like something like that. And I I may. Have yeah, and I don't know that the, I'm in Las Vegas, and I don't know the Boca Raton area really uh, personally. Um, but what I do is I generally go after all the subdivisions, like all all of the the um, all of the smaller sub areas, and I buy ads for the smaller areas, like like for example this type of thing here. Um, and I have, and what I do is I set up thousands and thousands of ads with hundreds of thousands of phrases to activate the thousands of ads. So, for example, um, with the Boca Raton lady, this lady here, 
So I create an ad for every subdivision with, that's on a, whether it's on a country club or not, I don't care. Every subdivision, every school will be like 200 East homes on the country club, 200 East homes in a gated community, on a tennis court, homes with a pool, oceanfront. I actually have 72 long tail additions or long tail phrases that I add on to every neighborhood subdivision in school. So, and then I go after all of them, senior living and all, I have a senior ad and then I have something like 20 or 30 phrases to activate that senior ad. Same thing with all of these. And I have like 70 of them. This is her back office. I'm sorry, I'm kind of moving quickly here, but we got some ground to cover. So pardon me for my quick speaking. <laughs> this is the back office here. Um, when she generates leads, um, they come into the back office here. She's averaging, if you average, you know, any given week at this time, she's doing about two leads a day, right at maybe 1.8 or 1.9 leads a day. And her budget is $15 a day. So she, she's right at around $8 a lead. Eight, and 15, 8 and 8 is 16. So that's why I say it's just under two leads a day. You know, some days she gets four leads a day. Look, on the seventh, look, here's one, two, three, four. There's one, four. But then look, where's the eighth? Nothing. Where's the ninth? Here's one in the ninth, one in the tenth. So it's all over. You see what I'm saying? Some days, the most she's ever gotten a day is five, and she's done that three times in the last month and a half. So that kind of gives you, I mean, it really is, it isn't like one, two, one, three, two, one. It's more like none, one, two, five, four, five, none, one, three. I mean, it is truly like you're rolling a dice. And don't ask me why, it's just the way it is. So that being said, for Boca Raton, Eight dollars a lead is unheard of. It's absolutely unheard of. People would be lucky to get it for twenty dollars a lead. When she came to me, that's what she was expecting. Certainly not eight dollars a lead. So the reason for that is because of my long tail technique. Now, before I get into that a little more, I want to show you um, when a lead comes in, you have all these actions available to you that you can use. You can and you can add them to drip marketing campaigns. Uh, you can. Oh, if you want to edit the campaigns, you just click on Open Drip Campaign, opens it up. If you want to edit the actual individual messages, you do that. Um, do you want the days they go out or day one? They, these are the days they go out. This message goes out on this day, this one, this day. So it goes to whoever you want it to go to. So this this one, general buyer, goes to the 24 people that she put into this box. Yeah. Yeah, it's like get response. It's built into this. It's, that's exactly right. So, and then you have a built in lead manager, which is part of. So, this is actually when you click on these, it activates the lead manager, which is here, and it brings it into the campaign manager. Yeah, it's available to the you being the broker and to your your agents. And it's kind of amazing, frankly. So you can give away sites to your agents. Now this particular broker, she has two partners or two agents. And if you go to agent manager here, you can see the agents that are in here. Let me click on it again. Um, I have code in that if the page doesn't load in like three seconds, it just says try to reload. So there we go. There we go. So here's our two agents here. And she's created websites for both of them, but they didn't buy domain names. If they buy domain names, that second star will light up. So these stars represent what the agent's actually done with their website. So if you click on the star, you'll, you'll find out what they did or didn't do. So the, the first star is they have not checked their profile. Second star, which they did do, is the photo. Third star is the domain name. See, if you click it, you can see the notice. And if you want, if you click here, it'll actually send them an email. It'll compose an email for you. And it'll send them an email saying, hey, you didn't buy your domain name, so you need to do that. So, it's so like I just clicked that one and it composed the email for me. So, it'll, it, it gives them their username and password and says, did you know if you buy a domain name, hook it up to your site, you, you, you can generate leads and blah, blah, blah. So, each one of these has a pre written email attached to it. When you click it, it'll open your e whatever email client you have. And it'll compose the appropriate email for that feature. So you can kind of move your agents along and say, hey, you know, it's like cracking the whip. Get busy, man. Here's your login credentials. And when they log in, their back office is just like this. So it's and it's a really powerful tool. It's, there's a lot of really, really, really powerful tools. Now, and I'm going to show you several of those. But before I do, um, what I 
what I want to do is kind of drill down a little more in, in the lead manager. So your lead manager here will tell you what ad work campaign the person came in off of. Um, you can see the homes that the person looked at. So this person looked at three homes here. If you click on the, the address, it'll show you the house. These are the homes that that lead looked at. Um, you, if you want to look at some of, some more uh, data, you can find out the, the pages that the person looked at here and the path that they followed to get to the pages. Um, you can actually look at the form that they filled out on the site because there's a bunch of different lead capture forms on the site. So this is the actual raw form. And if they fill out multiple things, they'll all be, this will be appended to or added to. Um, you can email them a property if you wanted to send them a particular property. Just put in the MLS number, I'll send it to them. Um, if you want to add them to property alert, it's right here. Now this person's already been added. So this is a matter of just reconfiguring the property alert for this person. So that's what that is. Um, or you could just set up a fresh one. Um, there's a lot here and we're not going to dig into all of it. And I have individual videos that you can check out later. But I did want to just kind of touch on all this stuff to give you an idea what this is. I do have training videos and I also have a help section here, down here in the lower left hand side. If you click on help with files, you'll see all the different things you can get help for. And there's a lot of it and you can just do a search right here. So um, you type in the word video, all the vid help, video help comes up. Whatever you want help on, there's, there's, there's some videos and graphical instructions, like how to add files to the website. Do you help? And then it'll show you exactly step by step what to do. So. And they're all, most of the features have that. And, and as I add new features, which is happening all the time, I, I add to this help, this list of help. So yeah, there's some there's some help stuff available for you. Um, I, and I'm not going to be able to show you everything here, but I definitely wanted to touch on a lot of the high points. I just keep reiterating that there's a bunch of actions here that are a lot of this is redundant to the things that you hit when you hit this. Um, so. What, there's a few extra things, like this is where you would delete the lead. Here's where you'd set it to do. Maybe you need to call that person back or something like that. You can set it to do here, um, critical task, blah, blah, blah. Hit OK, add the to your to-do list. It will sync with your Google Calendar. See, it's trying to, right now, it's trying to sync with my Google Calendar, but I'm not logged into Google. What? Yeah, yeah. It syncs with the Google Calendar. Yeah, this thing's super badass. Sorry for my language. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, everything your agent does on their site, you get updated here. And anything you do, it's also logged here. So all the events ever done by you or an agent is logged here. So you can keep track of what your agent's up to and doing. So if they say they called somebody, well, you know if they did or not. As long as you enforce a, as long as you enforce a policy saying, hey, if you call a lead, if I give you a lead, and by the way, here's how you would do that. You click on actions, assign lead, and then pick your agent. And then it, you know, it would assign that lead to the agent, and then it goes into the log that you did that, you know, and then and then it's up to yes. If the agent has their own website, here's what happens: it goes in here, and it also goes to them as well at the same time. Now, if the agent has a website and the lead is generated on their website, then it goes to you and to them at the same time. If the lead comes to you, it doesn't go to the agent at all unless you want it to. So. Yeah, so let me log into a site where we're actually doing that kind of stuff. Let's, and we're going to get back to the AdWord thing here. So I probably should just open a new tab. So here's a brokerage here in Blairsville. This is another one of my designs just to speak about my design prowess. It's significant. Um, but anyway, I, let, let me stop tooting my horn for a second and, and log into this thing. All right, so here it is. Now look at this. This is a this this company here is the number one brokerage in Blairsville, Georgia. They, here's their leads coming in. Two today, um, one, two, three, four, five the day before, whatever. Um, anyhow, so here's here's what you see. You see which agents are generating the leads. So this guy has 55. This guy's got 35. Uh, this one two. That's me. A test account one. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, I just have a test account in there. And then look, all of the all of the tracks are here. Everything that's ever done. So if you ever had to refer back to whatever got done on the site, I mean everything. If someone posts on the blog, it's there. And the reason for that is for um 
accountability. So if some if some disgruntled employee posts some porn or or some mean nasty thing on their blog, it's built into your site. So you're if if any bad monkey business is done, there's going to be a track. There's going to be a, an event. Every single thing has an event, no matter what somebody does. So that's kind of good. So if you have an employee that is not doing what they're supposed to or says they did something they didn't, you're going to know about it. It's kind of cool. Um, it's really great. I have some clients that are actually uh, real estate coaches, and they, they give some assignments to their clients, and they need to know if this stuff is better. So that's kind of what that's all about. Uh, yeah. So anyhow, um, so yeah, you're going to have a chart. Um, this is kind of a an interesting feature that we can turn on depending some people like it it's especially useful for loan officers they type in an agent's name and email address and it sends them an invitation and it says something to the effect of your site has been created let's see if i have one handy you can see here your site let's see if i have one bear with me for just a second I'm, i've got a, a setup where i have a whole bunch of monitors surrounding me yeah here's it Here's an example right here. So it would say like your new Irvine, your site is online. Yours would be Minneapolis Real Estate Websites Online. You can log into your new site here with this username and password. Here's your temporary URL. Um, I don't even know if this is still up. Yeah, so there, I generated that as a task the other day, just to test some stuff. I didn't add the blog post, but so anyhow, that got created just from this invitation. You just put in a person's name and email. The site is online. And what happens is they actually go to a, the first step is they go to a wizard because you don't know their phone number, all of this stuff. It sends out an invitation for them to finish the wizard. And I just don't remember the link off. I guess I could send myself an invitation real quick. I'll show you one. Wbinnick at me.com. Oh, Wbinnick at me.com. Let's say, call it Wayne Test 2. Send an invite, invitation sent. Now let's see here. Here we go, it just came in, it's right here. And this is actually how it looks. It has the graphics to it too. Here's, it says, you know, your site's online, you got this really cool back office, click here to sign up. When I click that, it takes you to um, but, but we can certainly set the wizard up for you. All right, here's an example of someone that has the wizard. So. They would be delivered to a page like this. Now the edges here would not would look like your website, but the middle part would be the wizard part. Here comes my invitation. Okay, anyway, so you fill when they fill this out, it's the same difference as if you manually add added the agent in the back office. Here, add agent. Notice the similarity because it's exactly the same form. You're just basically having the agent fill it out instead of you. Most brokers, frankly, this, the the real scenario is you bring a a new agent online. And then, in, and, and then to add their website and to add them into your back console, you just send them the invitation and they fill it out at their leisure. They're your new, they're your new agent, but you send them that and then they can fill everything out. And then they're added to your back office, uh, here into the agent manager. You know what I'm saying? So, so they, yeah. add their so here we go. So here's them. So this company has, um, 19 agents, whatever. Bridge has like 350, but <laughs> theirs is really cool. But um, there you go. And again, we know that they're really not using this very well or at all because look at the stars. None of them are serious. So the ones that are serious, they buy a domain name. That's the second star here. How do I know if you click it? It's right here. Art Miller has not bought a custom domain. Yes. Yes. When they... When they buy a domain name from someone like GoDaddy, you would see it that star light up. And how would they hook it up? Right here. Quick start. Right here. First time they log in, then let's log in as an agent, and we'll circle back around and talk about AdWords in a second. Well, let me. I'm not going to use their site anymore. Let's get back to the Booked site because I want to talk to you about the AdWords there. Let me trash this. Trash that alert there. Okay. So let's log in as an agent here. Log in. As all right, here we go. Okay, so let's log in as this one here. Log in as Mini Park. All right, now we're logged in as Mini. Here, see it up here, her name? Look, all right, look at this. She's been assigned nine leads. No, she, she has nine. 
the the top level had had uh, what ninety. This is she. This lady's been assigned nine. So she has all the same functionality and everything's all back here, just like if she owned the website. So she basically has a whole full virtual copy. And look at this quick setup. She hasn't done anything. So first step is set your domain name. She would buy a domain. It's, this tells them, add your domain name here. Do not forget to point your domain name to software. And then it says, you can find instructions on how to point your domain name you bought here. Notice this area shows any prefix like myprefix.domain.com. This is, can be handy for marketing purposes. You can create domain names and point them to squeeze pages and landing pages and listing websites, which this product will generate for you or your agents. But anyway, you would just buy your name and stick it in here and hit update domain. You want instructions? They're right here. It's a simple, not a big deal. And a million people have done GoDaddy stuff, but they're right here. Um, if you want extra domain names, you can buy extra domain names right here. Put, a, put the domain name and what page you want it to land on. You can add as many as you want. Go down as many as you want. It'll just keep adding to the list. So that's the domain name. Third part is personal photos, um, autoresponders, uh, add properties, edit your blog bio, username and password, testimonials, company and office logo, stuff like that. Um, I kind of want to talk about AdWords in it for a second here, but and then I also want to show you the mark some of the marketing tools as well because there's a lot of them. But I I want to kind of touch on them really quickly. And if you don't mind, I want to log back out and log back in as Joan because I know Joan's added at least one property, so it'll be a lot better if I do that. If you don't mind, is that all right? Let me get back in as Joan here. So hold on just a minute. All right, now we're back here and we, we're back to our 90 leads. Um, here, let me see. All right, this is the city thing. So when you add, the second thing on the cities is here. Um, when you add cities, they go in this list. See, add city here. They populate this list. And if you click on a city and hit find new subs, it will find all the subdivisions within the city. You can add any of them that you want. They're all here. And then if you want to write text about it, you don't have to because my program will write it for you. All of this was written by my algorithms. It knows the prices of the homes, so it shows you the average. It'll say homes in this area sell between 650 and 2 million. They average, they average two beds six, with 2,316 square feet. Uh, homeowners with a keen eye have not done a thorough search until they check it out, 200 East, uh, until they check out 200 East. And notice the SEO. I have the, the subdivisions in bold and stuff like that. Some of the homes and the blah, blah, blah. I have the restaurants for the area, the popular ones. I have the parks. I have the stores, look, Apple Store, Whole Foods, the popular stores for the area. I'm using Yelp and Google Places to generate this text automatically. This lady did my text. So all the subdivisions that are added have organic SEO on the outside. So if you check this out here, um, Unities. There's a link to get to it. Here we go. So notice this. This is what it looks like on the outside. You have all your communities in here. And if you click on one, it'll try to pull the homes for the community as well. So here's the, the text at the top for the community, the subdivision, and then your the seven homes that are for sale in that community are right here. And then he, all, all of this is done automatically too. This lady didn't do anything. Well, she, she added her cities and then she clicked find new subs and she had add, 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 add. Just like this much. Add. That one's added. Um, add. That one's added. Add. That one's added. So now on the outside, she'll have more. Let me see if I can find it. So on the outside, she'll have more underneath the, the, just, this will, this will start to grow. No, it'll, it'll go to 602 pretty soon. Maybe, yeah, there you go. See? 602. I just added two. And it, it, the system's going to write the text for her. <laughs> Isn't that the coolest thing ever? No one has this technology at all. This is really neat. And then, of course, you got your pretty SEO links here. I hate when I, that happens. but Okay, so what we got here is, let me turn this one off, this. Let's go to, um, let's stop this. Oh, the favorite cities here. Um, you set that. The reason what this is for, the top cities, is for some of my widgets. Like when I showed you, let's see if I can get back to that one. Um, let's 
see, Sean Moran, this is the actual loan officer, and then he has agents that he gives websites to. And so agent slash Josephine. All right, so these cities here across the top that'll load here in the middle, Howell, Jackson, these are actually from the favorite cities widget here. So that's where that comes from. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can change them. You can also move them up, move the orders around or whatever. Whatever. It's not that big a deal, but, but it is necessary for a lot of the features like, like that. And I actually have other, other little toys that are built into the backs of the websites that use those cities, those main cities, because you want to have a very big list of cities, but you want to focus on a few of them. So I added this extra, this top cities thing. You have your main city here. Anyhow, let's stop. Um, let's talk about some of the marketing tools. I'll only be able to touch on a few of them if you don't mind, because I, I'm, and I know I'm talking fast because I'm trying to cover a lot of ground. You can create QR codes to do, um, open a website. When someone scans the QR code, it'll open a site, dial a phone number, initiate an SMS, display a message, or compose an email. Um, you can create those pretty simply. Like website URL would be, um, www.google.com. So I'm cre this will create a QR code that when scanned will go to Google. That's what this, that's what that, that, that'll do. There it is. See, there it is. If you want to cut. No, actually would right click save as. I mean, you could do it. It's not, it's not actually that automatic as for adding to pages. Um, what it, that being said, though, it does automatically create QR codes for your listings and your, your listing websites. It does that automatically. You don't have to add them to pages, though. It's just going to automatically create them and add them to pages for you where it seems appropriate. But if you wanted to manually make one for a sign or something, that's why you would, you would go here. You know, if you wanted it for a flyer or you needed it, you could generate them here. Um, and then we have our uh, text codes where you can create a text code. Now, these are automatically made by my system. She didn't make these. It will make text codes for your listings and where it deems appropriate so that when you text uh, 1964 to 41411, you get a mobile, a link to the mobile website. And again, for sign writers or whatever you want. So you have that. And Two four one four one one, and then they would get back on their phone this, and this would be a hyperlink that they click with their phone, which is actually the mobile version of the website, but that detail page for that property. Yes, uh, we have a Craigslist poster here, where you these are her three listings regarding the text codes. What'd you say? It does. Yeah. So if they text that code, it does capture their number and it goes here in the uh, lead manager. If you want, I'll do one right now. Stand by and watch. I'm going to text this code to 41411 while we're on the phone. Stay on the line. This will just take a second here and see. So here we go. Compose to number 1964. Well, I'm just, just done, just now done, just now. Let's see what happens. One, nine, six, four. Okay. Wait, I have a, ty I have a typo. Sorry. Info. It responded back and said I had a typo. So hold on. Info. E number. Okay, done. And I got back mobile thing. Like I got back a link to the mobile site. So now look, let's see what we got here. There it is, incoming text. And that's my phone number. And that's my phone number right there. And it's a hot lead, of course, because 
um, it's it's someone who's texting for information. So it goes in as a hot lead. And but if you wanted to change it, you could change it here. Whatever. Yeah. So that's a text code thing. It's it's handy. It's a tool. It's just a tool. I don't think it's some magic thing or something, but it's a nice tool. And same thing with the Craigslist thing. It's a tool. And when your Craigslist ads will go in, they look like this. They're really nice. They're not junky like some of the others. Now, what's happening here is some windows are opening um, large. And my screen, I have a 30-inch monitor, so bear with me as I kind of crunch things down. It opens up Craigslist here, and, and then you have to log into your Craigslist account here. Um, and then just like any other system nothing's automatic anymore but you cut and paste the fields into craigslist field this makes it easy you just hit okay and it goes on your clipboard so i've made it as easy as possible and your ad will look like this where i'm moving my mouse it'll gen it'll generate custom images for you as well so you can you know um upload your images yeah yeah here they come now so Anyway, it's pretty cool. It, again, it's a tool. It's not it's not odd, super automated, but it's as automated as any company does, and I think it's better than most because this right here is what your ad will look like, which is better than most because it does. Even though you can't do graphics in Craigslist anymore, you can use CSS to generate some cool looking stuff like this. It really will look like this ad here. So it's a little bit better, but it, you know it's still not as good as it used to be when we used to be able to do HTML inside the Craigslist. But I you know how that is if you know anything about Craigslist. So that's the Craigslist poster. You can take your 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 listings and generate videos from them. Um, you would click whatever listing you want to make a video from. Um, select your starting and ending text and your background. Um, whatever you want, whatever background you want. Like I just changed it to that, and then you could change the color to white or black or whatever. And then you set the text. To right here, whatever text you want to display, and then you hit um, you you set your voiceover here, and it has a very 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 good voice. Um, I'll play it through this. A computer a computer does the voiceover, and it's very good. And it's oops, excuse me, hold on a second. I'm sorry about that. A computer does the voiceover, and it's very good. And here's what it sounds like. Hold on a minute. Here, award Trangle has perfected a unique blend of innovation and timelessness in this masterpiece of dynamic yet harmonious and like design. A meandering pathway beckons into the alluring botanical. That's what the voiceover sounds like. It's pretty impressive by anyone's standards. It's, it's 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 an amazing thing about how I got it to do that. And you can write in your own text here if you wanted, but this is just the text that comes off the listing. Yeah, so that's that's what that is. Yeah, it's it's very very good. It's, I've never seen better. It's the it's the absolute state of the art in uh, voice technology. Um, it was the company is from the um, one of the um, I want to say it's Switzerland, and then it was bought by Amazon just two months ago, and then taken off the market. But I got a hold of the technology. And I don't want to talk about it before they went off the market. And <laughs> it, it now runs on my servers. And that's what I use for my voiceovers. And it's just flipping amazing. And it's very good. You heard it for yourself. It's good. A lot of my clients, they don't want to have to upload uh, audio or make audio or whatever. They just want to be able to crank these videos out quickly. Um, if I hit compile video, it'll make the video. It takes about eight minutes. I'm not going to do it now, but I will show you um, what the finished product looks like. So hold on. Exactly. It takes the pictures and does a Kins Burns effect and adds in your photo with a watermark. So that's her photo with her phone number here. Um, and then it's playing the girl's voice right now, but I have my audio off. So you see the photos, they kind of scroll through the photos with the Kins Burns effect. Um, you have this version, and then I have one without the watermark. In case you had to have this for your virtual tour link and you were not allowed to have it branded or whatever, um, you have both versions. So here's that. This is the one with the branding, and this is the one without. Here, I, I when I generate a video, I create both versions for you. This does have the voiceover and everything. It just doesn't have the branding. So this is the non-branded version for you. Same exact thing, just without the branding. It does have the voiceover, but I have my audio off. And you already heard the audio, but because I'm doing this recording, the audio is off. I'm using my Bluetooth microphone. So 
anyway, that's it. There you go. Um, simple, sweet, and easy. I do have a version of the video maker coming for the neighborhoods, which is really, really exciting. So uh, imagine being able to take a neighborhood and generate a video automatic or uh, yeah, video automatically and uploading that to YouTube as the profile for this neighborhood, as the profile for this neighborhood. You would be able to dominate first page of, of Google, first and second page of Google, just with your videos of your neighborhoods. And this, yes. I, it's a feature I have coming out next week. I'm integrating. Since my computer is already writing all the text for all these neighborhoods, why not just make it create a video? I have the photos in the, of the homes in the neighborhood as well, and I can use street view and bird, eye, and bird view, and I, and I can take a street view of the restaurants and the stores. I have all of that. Why not just make the whole video? Yeah, the homes for sale uh, in the neighborhood and or and I'll probably have an option not to do that or, and or just the street view of the neighborhood with the stores and stuff in the neighborhood. The reason why is because if you make a video with uh, some agent's photo, they're going to get ticked off because you're going to get ranking on Google organically and they're going to get really hot under the collar. But I can get street view photos. They can't say nothing about that of the neighborhood, plus mix in the store photos and stuff, you know, of the area, just all over the area. We'll bust them. <laughs> and then I and then I have the description here, you know, like the neighborhood, that, like the prices of the homes and what stores are available and stuff like that. So we're going to be able to do some really incredible stuff here with this data. So anyhow, it's coming soon to a theater near you. Your standard stuff here, like your testimonials, they're all, you know, it's all here. And my I always go the extra mile. So when you do your testimonial, you can hook up a YouTube video. If you have one to your testimonial, if you, you know, if you have a, a YouTube or yeah, you, a, a video of your person or what have you, you can hook that up. Um, and maybe more importantly about hooking up videos is your squeeze pages, which you can generate squeeze pages. Um, you can also hook up your videos to your squeeze pages. So when you create your video, I've only hooked up one video, but you can hook up your videos to your squeeze pages. And I'll show you one that's already made here. If you click here and then here, you'll see um, you'll see this load. I must have clicked something wrong because they load instantly. All right, so your video will load here instead of the photo. Of course, I must. You know what? Let me see here. I think I picked something. There it goes. Okay. Okay, so I made just a quick little, just to show the technology, I just recorded a um, a search session, like what it's like to do a search on the site, because this is like free online search. So I just used the search on one of the sites and made a video while I was doing it. So that's what this is. You're looking at it here, see? It's like, here's what it's like to do a search on the site, fill this out to get started or whatever. You could, if you wanted to create AdWords to drive it to something like this. and. I mean, this one's a free online search. This would be like something like um, what Zerpel would do, where, except better because Zerpel doesn't have a video that's playing. You could be creative with this. But I, the more important thing is the better squeeze pages because I have squeeze pages for like um, first-time buyer, short sale, um, sell your home fast. You could do a video, you know what I'm saying, for with this, uh, with this squeeze page here. Sell your home fast, you know, with the audio and everything. So... There's a lot of power here that you could use with the squeeze pages, with, with the fact that you can hook up videos. And speaking of the videos, so I showed you the drop down, um, and she only had one that you could select. Here's where you would go to add more videos. You would go right here, create videos. Um, no, not create videos. You would go to um, the YouTube see, videos here. Videos on website here. So this is the one video that we have, and you could play it in a miniature version if you wanted right in there. But we have, we've added one, so you would say add YouTube video link, and you would put in the description here, and then your embed link from YouTube, and then here's the instructions on where to find that embed link. So there you go. Anyway, I just have the one video I've added, but that's what that is. And speak, notice how I couldn't find it. There's so many features in this site, and each one of these has just tons of just tons and tons of stuff. So what I did 
to help you is there's a search here. I don't want, this is kind of a neat feature. You can just type in whatever you're interested in. So if you want to do social networking, you want to know where it is, you don't have to dig around and find it. You can just do, use this thing and go right to it if you want. This is where you'd load in your social networks. And then if they have like widget codes or whatever, you could you could paste those in too. Paste the widget code in here and put your, if you don't have it, fine. Just put in your Facebook link to your Facebook page. And this will do all the rest of the work for you on the outside of the website. And if you want to add a new social network, since new ones are coming around all the time, just click here. Put in the network name, the link, and the long code. And then as far as the image for it, you could you could do an image by clicking here and up, you can upload an image for the social network. So, yeah, yeah. But whatever you're interested in doing, just type in whatever you want to do. So if you want to mess with agents, here, type in agents. You want to fool with the website here. You want to create a page, uh, type in the word create. Um, web, you can, you can see here all the different like, ad pages, edit pages. Like you can add pages to your site here. Create a new page would be here, go to town. Here's your title and meta tag here, blah, blah, blah. Your page library, all the pages you've already created are here. If you want to edit the title and meta tags, click here. There you go. And plus, here's the page. It was a test. This is a test on Tuesday, whatever. Um, it's neat stuff. Oop, I hit done. It goes actually to the outside of the site where the page actually is. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Um, Let's get back to business. I kind of got off on a rabbit trail. Speaking of page creating, there's also a menu maker. So so if you create a page and you want to be able to add add it to the menu, here's the menu for Joan's site. These are these 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 items here are the items that you would find on the outside of her website. Delete one or edit the menu item. You can add a new sub item, um, add another one across the top, whatever. So there you go. And then here's your preview of your menu is here. Now hers is transparent background because of the her design. So that's why you're not seeing it until I mouse over. This is semi rare, but still, this is still the preview for the menu. Um, anyway, I don't want to waste your life away with that. Here's your blog system here. Add a blog post here. Just create, um, uh, let, here's a neat feature that I have. I mean, this is simple stuff. Blog title, category, short description blog posts, whatever. Everyone has that. Drag and drop your images for the blog. What do you do? Most people don't blog because they don't know what to write. So this is a feature that I have called help me think of something to write. You click that, it generates a, it generates a question for you. What are some of the things you like to do when selling book or return on your property? It just generates random questions based on your popular city and based on real estate in general. What are recurring and non-recurring closing costs? Um, if there's like a hundred different questions it'll ask you every time you Every time you push the button, it'll, it'll generate something different for you. So that's kind of a neat feature. And then for people who really want to do something even more spectacular, maybe they use Active Rain or what have you, there's actually a blog post maker here, another one of my um, inventions. So um, you just take one of your listings and it turns your listing into a blog post that you can then put on. Uh, active rain or what have you and you have links that bring you back to your website here um, and if you this is an editable page this is editable as you're looking at it i'm able to edit this is like an editor that you're looking at here so yeah it's it's neat stuff and then when you're ready to po post it on active rain or what have you you just click on um source code here look it's already highlighted and ready to go copy and paste it so this this will generate your your blog post for you for like Active Rain because you can do some pretty pretty intricate uh, blog posts in Active Rain, so that's what that is, and um, it's neat, it's fun, it's cool. <laughs> um, let's see here, there's other fun little features. A lot of these are inventions of my devising based on different techniques for generating. Um, um, leads and stuff. Speaking of blog post maker, now this this agent has listings and I click listing flyer and I pick three listings. But a lot of agents don't have listings. But you want them to like do some promotion and stuff. So what you can do is you can do you can create it'll it'll generate content based on like a zip code, for example. 
look at this. So 02813, it pulled a photo from that zip code and, and used my algorithms to generate text for the zip code area, like the average cost in homes, the average cost of homes and how much people make in the area and the population here of that zip code. Isn't that cool? It's going to generate content for all kinds of different topics. City Flyer, and then it uses the MLS to pull every city. Same thing, that's how it did the zip codes. And you can do one, you can do them on schools, like elementary schools. And it's just incredible. Look at this. I did elementary school in Palm Beach Public. It pulls some homes for the area. It pulls the information about the schools. And where is it? Look, here's where it's at. <laughs> is this just this right here? Just this is worth the price of admission. Seriously, it's worth the price you pay me for the entire site. If you'll actually take the source code and paste it on Active Rain. It's a really big deal. It's just hard to really get people to wrap their mind around the power of this thing. So anyway, I digress. I'll stop because we'll spend all day on that and I have a lot of ground to cover. I'm not going to cover everything, but I want to, I'm digging a little deeper than I normally do because I'm recording this and I want to uh, be able to just give this to people to watch for as long as they want because I can actually go on for about two hours. That's how many features are in here, maybe three. It, I mean, it really goes on and on. You already have a library of newsletters. You can drag and drop them here. It'll populate an old newsletter section for you. You got new ones. You can, because I have my own newsletter system, but if a lot of people come to me and they have, they're coming to me from like WordPress or from all different places and they, they, they're bringing all kinds of content with them and their leads and stuff like that. So I got them covered. Import your contacts. Just simply drag and drop your contacts in a CSV file. It'll, it, there's some AI built into this thing, so it'll automatically, um, I, it probably won't work because I haven't dragged a, dragged a CSV file here. Okay, it'll go this far and that's it. You'd, you'd map the uh, lead type, agent name, category, and um, I, you could just leave this here alone if you want. You could type in um, your name or whatever because it would it'd be like you own the lead. Now, then what? the reason why I'm only mapping these, these few things is because it's automatically going to, um, it's automatically the AI is automatically going to map the rest of the fields for you. I, I don't even try it, it. I pull in everything and then create the extra columns as necessary. It's really amazing stuff. Um, we've got a file locker here. So are you familiar with uh, Dropbox? Great, but not everybody's a member, although most people, a lot of people are. I have my own built in Dropbox. You just drag a file here and then you hit share a file. Of course, I have to drag a file. Let me grab a file here. Stand by. Let me just drag something in here. All right. Let me just drag this image in here. Drag a file in. Let it upload here. All right. Let me drag another one. And a text file. So that's the one I just did here. Drag another one in. All right. Now you want to share a file. Just click it. You select the file you want to share. Hit share file put in the person's name and email address and it sends them a link to be able to download the file and you can add security too. So um, to add security, let's see, let's create a folder. All right. Drag and drop files into the folder and share this folder and then you have security easy, which means they don't have to have any password at all. Level one, you can, you, you, they have to have a, a password. Level two, they have to have a, okay, level one, here's level one, I'm sorry, it's been a while since I've shown this. Level one means whoever gets this email, whoever I send this to, it will, it will lock their IP address. So whoever computer they use to get this, as soon as they look at the email, whatever computer they look at the email on, is it's locked to that, except for mobile. Because I figure people will look at it on mobile, but they can't download stuff on mobile, really. So I, I give them a pass if it's a mobile. I'm looking at the browser type. If it's mobile, I don't lock the IP address. And plus, mobile is always moving out. And, you know, tower to tower, the IP address changes. But when they're at a regular computer, whatever IP address is used to look at this file, it's locked to it. And level two is an IP lock plus a password. You put in a password here, and then the, wh whatever looks, whoever looks at this email, it's locked to that computer, plus they have to have the password, and you would verbally give them the password because it's not going to tell them what the password is in the email. So there's three levels of, of security, open, level one, and level two, and you don't have to be a member of Dropbox or anything else, and you have your own file sharing system. It's kind of handy for agents if they ever wanted to use it. And every feature I'm showing you here is available to the broker and to the agent as well. The agent has every single feature I'm showing you, all of them. You got a project manager here. Um, so you can, 
Oh, we created a bunch of letter A for testing here. Okay, so you got a pro you have a um, a, um, a project, then you have task, a task, task two. Let's add task two, task three, and then each task can have have memos and stuff attached to it. Look at this. So task two, you can add notes to task two. You can assign people. You can assign members to the task. I don't, of course you have to add members before you can assign members. You click here and you add members and you can assign members. And these people would be, they would have access to the task. And then if they complete the task, everybody who is a member of the project gets notified that person A completed this item in task two, that kind of thing. So if you had like a, a project where like you're doing a roof or you're, you're remodeling a house or whatever, you can create tasks, assign, add all the members involved in like remodeling your house and then create a bunch of tasks. And as each task gets done, everyone who's a part, who's a member of the task will get notified. I hope you understand what I'm saying here. And notice how it asks for the cell number and stuff because it's going to text them as well as email. It's going to email and text them saying, this person just got done with this task. So that, you know, maybe, maybe the, like in a remodel, for example, maybe one person's task is to tear the roof off and then other guy's task is to deliver the material. And the third guy's task is to do the roof. Well, when, after the tear off happens, everyone in the, in the group would be notified so then the next guy would know that he needs to get started and then after next guy gets done then the next guy knows he needs to get started that's that's the purpose behind the notifications and the tasks it's kind of cool and you can attach files and screenshots to a task as well that's why you have a file drop here it's kind of a big deal again almost worth the price of admission for people who need something like this very very cool stuff and one other thing about the project manager notice that you have a template templates here you can turn a task into a template. So for example, let's say one of your, ta let's say you're doing a bunch of remodels or, or you're selling houses or whatever you're doing. Agents often sell houses. <laughs> let's say there's certain paperwork that always has to be done. Like always this loan officer has to be notified. Always certain things have to be filed or whatever. You can create a, a, ta a whole project, right? And then turn it into a template so that you create instances of that uh, project without having to reinvent the wheel every time because it's always the same you know always we have to file these papers then always we have to get a home inspection then always we have to get the loan papers done or whatever your whatever the project is you can just create copies of it basically so that's why there's templates there because you're going to you're not that way you don't have to create the tasks over and over other uh, projects over and over because then it's more hassle than it's even worth so you know it's kind of cool. It's kind of a big, powerful, awesome deal. But I will stop there because I can babble on about it for quite a while. Um, let's see. There is a mobile version of everything. Um, for example, let's. Now it's. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be sizing my window here pretty small. So hold on. I'll kind of give you a taste of what it's like. Stand by. Okay. So here's the mobile. It scales down and then it detects mobile and then it just loads mobile, as you'll see here. There we go. So then there's a mobile version and it's a mobile app. So like notice how I'm scrolling. Notice how you always have this menu bar down here. Yeah, so it's more like a mobile app. Not It's not really a, um, it's not responsive, which I think is a farce. It's a mobile app. So it's actually an application that runs on the phone. Like here's all the local homes. Now I'm in Las Vegas as I do this. And even though she's in Boca Raton, this thing runs, my nearby system runs national. It runs national. So it'll always work. It'll always pull the homes nearby the person. What it just did is it found my location and it's finding homes around me. I'm in a pretty good area. So um, anyway, it's kind of cool, kind of cool. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, it's a mobile thing. It's, it's nice. I like it. It's good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, whatever. I mean, everyone has their, their preferences on what they think is nice. It, this is good. It's nice. It's, it's good. As you can tell, it's fine. This is nice. I mean, it's certainly nicer than a lot of them. There may be some that are nicer, but this is pretty good, darn good if you ask me. So, and I especially like that your menu stuff always stays at the bottom. So. That's the kind of the mobile thing. Um, let's see, website design. So the agents will have the ability to change designs and there's a lot of them 
available. And I actually have another six of them that I need to add in to the mobile library. Uh, they simply click a design and it changes on the spot. If you want a demo of that, I can do it, but not on her site because her agents would be angry if I changed their designs. But you saw you saw this one. Um, the, these are all the different designs. Here's the Bridge Realty. They actually that design is actually one of the designs that your agent can agents can choose. Um, this one here that that I'm moving my mouse on. Let's see, it's Reliance Realty Groups. So there we go. This. That's this design here. These are like some of the neighborhoods that he's working with. Oh, I have, I have a patch out for that neighborhood thing. Um, anyway, they're but they're really they're really nice. They're nice looking designs. They're 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 very very good. Um, I'm I'm very happy with them. If you're curious about any of them in particular, I can show you them, and they're pretty good. And there's more of them actually. The Boca Raton one is one. Like this Boca Raton Joan. Here, look, look at this. Boca Raton Joan. Here's her site. And then one of her agents' websites. Here's what one of her agents looks like. Agent slash mini. All right, here we go. This is her agent. Did I lose you? Okay, notice this is the agent's name, phone number. So, yep. Look, agent's name, Mini Park. It says mine, but whatever. Her name's Mini. So it's it's like a full site. It's just with the agent's name and contact information. See? On everything. So it's really cool. So it's not just like one of those cheapy five page sites. Everything the broker has, the agent has. Look at this. Built in search, everything for the agent. It's her name on everything. With a push of a button she can change designs. So um it's good stuff. Yeah, pretty good. Not it's not too shabby for free websites for your agents, I'll tell you. Um anyway, let me show you let's go a little bit more. Um we can so dig in on. here. They, here's their color scheme. This is actually a live preview of the website here in the micro form. That's why you see the photos changing in the background. So as you fool with the colors, it changes the site. Now this particular design isn't hooked up to the colors because the agent will destroy it. <laughs> with tackiness, but I would say 75% of the designs you can change the colors on. This is not one of them. Um, yes, yes. Okay, okay, well, you know what? I think we mostly have it all done. If you don't mind me touching on this real quick, real, and I'm talking about one minute here, literally one minute. This is the AdWord system. The idea is simple. You pick your areas that you're interested in marketing to, Add them to this column, select your market areas, what, select your budget, here's the budget, max daily budget, select your targeting, where do you want to talk, where do you want to focus your marketing at here, um, and it does all of your AdWords stuff for you. Um, it's really cool. These are all of the different, the, these are all the targeting cities you added, and these are the ads here, and these are the extra long tail ads here. You pick what you want, and I, generally, frankly, I do it for the client to get them started, but then after it's already done, you can fool with it back here if you want to make changes. So that's the, the AdWord thing kind of in a nutshell. Um, we won't beat it up because, like I said, like you said, you needed to run, and that's fine. And if you ever need help, just click here and you get live help. That's hooked up to me. So that's small little aside, but the, um, the AdWord thing is there. Um, you can do organic SEO here as separate packages if you want to do that. Um, I, I farm that out. I sub that out. Um, I, this money goes directly to my, my subcontractor who does the organic SEO. Um, it's, it's worth doing and it's really cheap. It's my cost. And it's, um, I have some foreign hands that help and they do, a, they do a lot of work for very little money. And that's why those, co those prices are really low. And it's, those are not monthly prices. They're just whenever you want and you'll get a boost. I do recommend that people do it every two or three months just to kind of get them, them out there. Um, and there you go. I mean, we can go on and on. And like you said, you have to run. You can import your listings simply by typing in an MLS number. It sucks in all the photos and pictures. Um, it takes so long to get through this entire demo, but this is enough to kind of get you started. There's, we've got about 60% of the way. I've shown you about 60% of the stuff. There's probably another 40% you haven't seen yet, which is kind of insane, but true. Uh, it's just, there's just so much here. Um, and there's actually even more things coming because at the end of the day, I'm just trying to get people to generate leads organically, not organically, however, 
um, so they can, you know, increase their business. Thank you so much for your time. I'm sorry I talk a mile a minute, but I, I wanted to cover a lot of ground with you. And um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. We've been on, we've been on the phone for an hour. My goodness. Time flies, doesn't it? Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.